Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. Today is Friday, November 17th, 2023. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning. It's Friday. It's Feel Good Friday. Good to see everybody back this morning for Bible study. Um, we are up to Esther chapter 6 this morning. And I'm excited. This is turning into another cliffhanger, just like we said with the book of Job. I'm enjoying the book of Esther. Um, we're going to read it this morning in the Amplified Bible. And then I pulled up some other verses that relate to this um, chapter today. So this is good. This just continues to be, um, you know, one cliffhanger after the other. Good morning. Good morning on Instagram. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon and evening on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, wherever you are in the world. Um, this chapter today is not too long. It's only 14 verses. And let me give you the title here in the Amplified. The title is The King Plans to Honor Mordecai. So the king has plans to honor Mordecai. We read yesterday, Haman had plans to uh, do away with Mordecai. So we're going to see whose plan prevails in this chapter this morning, all right? So we're going to pray and we're going to get right into it because I'm excited. I enjoyed this chapter. Like I said, I found a couple of uh, other scriptures from other books of the Bible that I can tie into this. And so um, I just want to get started this morning. And then we're going to hopefully all be off to a wonderful day, enjoy our Feel Good Friday, and then have a wonderful weekend. Thanksgiving is quickly approaching. So I've got to get myself in the mindset for um, Thanksgiving and to cook and figure out whether I'm making sweet potato pies or cheesecakes or apple pies or whatever I'm going to do. All right, but let's pray. Let's get into the word of God this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for waking us up this morning, Lord. I thank you for bringing us through this month of November. Today is the 17th of November. Father, we don't take it for granted. Lord, we thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, I thank you that you continue to watch over us. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around us that cannot be broken, penetrated, nor compromised, oh God. Father, I pray that you will continue. Lord, keep us from all accidents, seen and unseen. Keep us from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Father, let us go through the course of our day without accident nor incident, Lord God. Father, I pray according to Psalm 91 that you will continue to give your angels charge over us. Dispatch your heavenly angels who excel in strength, O God, to go before us to lead us and guide us. Father, keep angels forever posted behind us to be our rear guard. Lord, I pray that we will always be surrounded by angels. Cause your angels to surround us in our cars, in our homes. Father, wherever we place the soles of our feet, may we dwell in safety. Father, may favor be our portion. May goodness, grace, and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. Lord, I lift up our bloodlines this morning, maternal and paternal. Father, I pray that you will bless them from the oldest to the youngest. Father, keep your hand upon them, anyone in our family and our bloodlines that are not serving you, oh God, I pray that this month of November 2023 will be a turning point in their lives. Father, send somebody across their paths that will speak a word into their lives, cause information to come across their screens that will change their hearts, oh God, soften their hearts, turn their face and their hearts towards you, Lord God. Father, this morning we lift up the children. We continue to pray and ask, oh God, that you will bless the children, keep the children, anoint the children, Father, increase their capacity for learning, give them a love of learning, cause them to learn easily, quickly. Oh God, place them in the classrooms with the right teachers, place them amongst the right friends, Lord God. Father, keep them from peer pressure. Father, I pray that you will keep them from all the wrong people. So, Father, we pray right now for a divine separation from the wrong people, places, and things that the children will walk in the paths that you have for them. Use their lives for your glory, even at an early age. Now, Father, I ask that you will bless us, cause us to be, our minds to be sound, sharp, focused, and alert, Lord God. Cause us to be diligent in the things that you have caused us to do. Father, may we always go forward. May we, may we make progress always. May we never go backwards. Bring everything into divine alignment. Father, orchestrate our lives, cause us to operate in divine timing. May we 
operate with the spirit of excellence, oh God. Increase our spiritual intelligence, oh God. Increase our sensitivity and our ability to hear your voice that when you speak, Lord God, that we not just hear, but we heed what it is that you're saying. Father, as we prepare to read Esther chapter six this morning, Father, may we glean from your word that which it is that you would have each and every one of us to receive on an individual basis, that which we need for our lives, oh God. Cause us to see things that we've never seen before in this book. Help us to apply the word of God to our lives each and every day. Father, let everything that we do and say, think and become, let it be pleasing in your sight according to your will. So Father, I ask that you will give us divine revelation and wisdom of the plan and purpose, the destiny that you have ordained for our lives, that we can walk in it and we can can fulfill the plan and purposes for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, family. Blessings to you. All right, here we go. Esther chapter six. When you walk the path, you sometimes get tripped up. Absolutely. The enemy is always looking to trip us up. That's for sure, right? That's a true statement. But I'm going to take us through some scriptures this morning that apply to um, Mr. Haman here. All right. Here's the title. Amplified. The king plans to honor Mordecai. On that night, the king could not sleep. So he ordered that the book of records, a memorable and memorable deeds, the chronicles be brought and they were read before the king. It was found written there how Mordecai had reported that Bigdana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who were doorkeepers, had planned to attack King Ahasuerus or Xerxes. The king said, what honor or distinction has been given Mordecai for this? Then the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. So the king said, who's in the court? Now, Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to ask the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows, which he prepared for him. That's verse four. The king's servant said to him, look, Haman is standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in and the king said to him, what is to be done for the man who the king desires to honor? Excuse me. Now Haman thought to himself, whom could the king desire to honor more than me? So Haman said to the king, for the man whom the king desires to honor, let a royal robe be brought, which the king has worn and the horse on which the king has ridden and on whose head a royal crown has been placed and let the robe and the horse be handed over to one of the king's most noble officials. Let him dress the man who the king delights to honor in the royal robe and lead him on horseback through the open square of the city and proclaim before him, this is what shall be done for the man who the king desires to honor. Next section, Haman must honor Mordecai. Then the king said to Haman, quickly take the royal robe and the horses as you have said and do this for Mordecai the Jew who is sitting at the king's gate. Leave out nothing of all that you have said. So Haman took the royal robe and the horse and dressed Mordecai and led him on horseback through the open square of the city, proclaiming before him, this is what shall be done for the man who the king desires to honor. Then Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his own house, mourning with his head covered in sorrow. Then Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. Then his wise counselors and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall in status, is of Jewish heritage, you will not overcome him but will certainly fall before him. While they were speaking with him, the king's eunuch's attendants arrived and hurriedly brought Haman to the banquet, which Esther had prepared. Amen and amen. Oh, how the tables just turned in this story, right? He created these gallows and his wife, and they told him to create these gallows to hang Haman yesterday with this big plot. 
And I was commenting how easily these people came up with a plot to take Mordecai's life and there was no thought, no sorrow, no no remorse, like no nothing. They could just take a life. And then they told him to go to the banquet and eat and enjoy himself. Yes, right? But the tables have indeed turned. So you know what that means. God can turn the tables for us in the twinkling of an eye, in a blink, God can do a divine, he can orchestrate a divine reversal and cause our enemies to fall before us. Amen and amen. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that every enemy, any enemy that is setting up traps for us and nets for us to fall. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause a divine reversal and cause our enemies to fall into the traps that they have set before us. Lord, just as it is in your word, let it be done. So it is and so shall it be. Amen and amen. I'm going to take you through the scriptures behind that. I'm not just making that up. It's scriptural. All right, here we go in my notes this morning. I have some. All right, so let's just talk about this quickly, right? Mordecai is now being honored. Haman is terribly embarrassed. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you? Haman is embarrassed. He cannot launch this plot to take Mordecai's life. He now has to honor him and put this robe on him. Now, Haman was full of pride, right? Because he sat there thinking to himself, well, there can't be anybody else that the king would honor over me. I'm the be all and end all, right? Like I'm the head honcho. I am just it. He thought he was everything, but not so. Don't you love it? It says here in verse six. So now Haman thought to himself, who would the king desire to honor more than me? There's nobody greater than me in the king's eyes, right? He was full of pride, full of arrogance. I said the day before, he was just braggadocious, right? But it backfired. So we're going to talk about these scriptures. Let's just see. I want to see what the um, message says about this. Haman thought to himself, here's the message. Haman thought to himself, he must be talking about honoring me. Who else? There is nobody else, right? You got to love it. You, and you love how God works. All right. So now here's the other thing, right? These people yesterday, his wife and his friends tell him, create the, these gallows, right? I think we read they were like 75 feet. Let, you know, go to the king and hang Mordecai on it. But now look what they say after the tables turn and now Haman is embarrassed. Now the wife turns around and she says, if this Mordecai is in fact a Jew, your bad luck. This is the message. I'm still in the message. Your bad luck has only begun. You don't stand a chance against him. You're as good as ruined. So these people who had talked him into creating this plot against Mordecai. Now she said, oh, you you are in trouble, buddy. You are not going to win against Mordecai. Oh my goodness, you just have to love it. Okay, so here we go. I pulled up some scriptures that I am tying to this and Haman, right? Psalm 141 and 10. Here we go. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. That's what Psalm 141 verse 10. That's why I pray that with confidence. This is... It is scriptural. It's right here. The King James reads, let the wicked fall into their own nests, own nets, whilst that I will escape. Let me get you some translations that are easier to understand. We all know what it means, but I'm going to just do this and make them fall into their own traps. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I got to end Instagram. It just went black. Okay. And make them fall into their own traps while you help me escape. That's the CEV. Here's the Amplified. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by and safely escape from danger. Give me one second. I apologize, but when Instagram does this, it does not recover. So I just have to end this early, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. 
That was the Amplified. I wrote down, here's the message. You know I like this. This is a prayer. But God, dear Lord, I only have eyes for you. Since I've run for dear life to you, take good care of me. Protect me from their evil scheming, from all their demonic subterfuge. Let the wicked fall flat on their faces while I walk off without a scratch. Here's, um, I think this is Jubilee. Where is it? Let the wicked fall together into their own nets while I pass on ahead forever. And here's another one. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. As for myself, meanwhile, I'm passing by. I just walk on by as if that trap is not even there and just watch them crumble. Here's another one, NCB. Let the wicked tumble into their own nets all together while I pass by unharmed. May we always be unharmed. Um, let the sinful, here we go, NLV. Let the sinful fall into their own nets while I pass by and am safe. It. May the wicked get caught in their own nets while I alone escape unharmed. Now, I would change that and say, for our families, may our families, may we and our families, us and our families, our households, our bloodlines always escape unharmed. All right. Here we go. The next verse that I pulled up pertaining that I think fits nicely with this chapter is Psalm 23, verse 5. Here we go in the Amplified. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. So here we are. Haman now has to pr pretty much prepare a table in front of or for Mordecai. Right. So this is, let's say, Mordecai speaking. Lord, you have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mordecai is his, I mean, Haman is his enemy. And now Haman has to honor Mordecai. Let's read this in the message. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. I love this. Here's another one. N-E-T. You prepare a feast before me in plain sight of my enemies. You refresh my head with oil. My cup is completely full. And some say my cup overflows. Here, look. Here's NLV. You are making a table of food ready for me in front of those who hate me. You have poured oil on my head. I have everything that I need. I lack nothing. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I shall not want. I shall not be in need. Here we go. Here's another one. What do I have? That was 23 and 5. Proverbs 16, 18. King James Bible. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Haman was full of pride. He was very arrogant. He was braggadocious and prideful. And now look. So let me pull up some other translations amplified pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall ceb pride comes before disaster and arrogance before a fall a warning why not to be arrogant arrogance pride goes before destruction and arrogance before failure one says here's another one cev too much pride will destroy you Here's ERV. Pride is the first step toward destruction. Proud thoughts will lead you to defeat. Here's MSG. First pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. I love it. Okay. Um, did I have another one here? Proverbs. Did I pull? Oh, oh I didn't pull it up. Oh, this was Proverbs 16. So that's Proverbs 16, 18 is what I just read to you. Pride goes before destruction. Psalm 23 and 5 I had here and Psalm 141 verse 10. And then I just wrote in my notes here when we get down to the end. 
Verse 14, while, the, while they were still speaking with him, the king's eunuchs or attendants arrived and hurriedly brought Haman to the banquet, which Esther had prepared. And I just wrote a note that this is going to be a cliffhanger. This is a cliffhanger. We're going to have to see what happens on Monday. What hap you know, what takes place, what transpires at this next banquet. But Haman, um, how embarrassing, right? Did I read this to you in the, in the message? It said he was mortified. You know, I just love that. And he should be. He had to hang his, his, uh, then Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman fled to his house, thoroughly mortified, hiding his face. Absolutely. Totally embarrassing. Right? Very embarrassing. So anyway, this chapter was really great. Um, you know, these are my prayers for us that anybody who is setting a trap for us, anybody who is trying to cause us to fall, cause us to not, not succeed, to go backwards or anything like that, may they fall into their own, you know, may they fall into their own traps while we walk safely by. I love it, right? We can just keep on going. We don't even have to stop. Sometimes you, when God intervenes on your behalf, you don't have to fight anybody. You don't have to argue. You can just, like this says, it says you just walk walk by unharmed. You don't miss a beat while I alone s shall safely pass by. I don't have to get caught up in anybody's foolishness. I can keep being about my father's business, keep being about what I need to do and let God handle it, right? So that's my prayer for us, that anybody or anything that is devising a trap, a, a net for us to fall into, let them fall into their own traps. Let them fall into their own nets based on Psalm 141 verse 10 while we safely pass by and continue on unharmed, unfazed, right? Here, let me look at this other one. And here's the other prayer. May God spread a table. This is Psalm 23 verse 5. Again, scriptural. You prepare a feast for me right in front of my enemy. So for everybody and anybody who was trying to devise evil plans and plots against us, Lord, prepare a table for us right in front of our enemies. And then it says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You refresh my head with oil. My cup is completely full. You pour oil on my head. My cup runs over. You have poured, poured oil on my head and I have everything that I need. My cup overflows with blessings. Good morning, Gigi. <laughs> How are you, family? All right. So it is Psalm 23 and 5. Again, this is my prayer for us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, will you please prepare a feast right in front of our enemies for anybody who is devising ill, harm, hurt, destruction for us, oh God. Father, I pray that you will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies, cause our cups to overflow, cause our cups to be completely full, cause us to have everything that we need when we have need of it, oh God. May we lack nothing. May every need in our lives be met in divine timing. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, this was good this morning, family. I'm going to add this. Um, I'm going to add these verses to my morning prayer routine. I have started to type up a new list. I have several lists of things that I pray and I don't have these verses um, in that list of things I recite every morning. But I'm definitely I will definitely be adding Psalm 141 and 10 and Psalm 23 and 5 that. For anybody who sets a net, a trap, anybody that wants us to call it, to fall and not succeed, may they fall into the traps that they have set for us. May it totally backfire. May their plots, plans, tricks, and schemes, may they boomerang back onto them. And may we be blessed. May we succeed. Allison, I write some of your prayers down so that I won't forget them. Thank you. That is such, that is such um, a blessing and an honor. And you know that my heart's desire is to do, um, to release my book and to do as, to do, um, I want to do an audio book of, you know, how I like to go on, on YouTube and listen to other people pray. That's my heart's desire that I will have my own audio book where all of these different prayers that I write, that I will 
have come out with my own audio books of prayers for different topics. So thank you. That's a blessing, Kimberly. It's great to know that my prayers impact people like like uh, Greg was saying the other morning that he enjoys my prayers, that they're very uplifting. So I just pray that God continue to increase the anointing for prayer upon my life and that I will be able to release my books and release my ebooks. I want to have books, ebooks and audio books. That's my goal. So y'all pray for me that I will, um, get that I will get it together and get this stuff done. As I was saying yesterday, Kimberly, I think it was yesterday and you were saying you can relate to that. You know, you ask God for money and then God gives you these ideas, but the money is not going to just drop. We don't have money trees in the backyard, right? You actually have to put your hand to the work that he has called you to do. And when he gives you these ideas, they're money makers, and they will produce the wealth, exactly what you're asking for, and probably even more than you can can ask or imagine, more than you can think, right? But if we don't do it, we can't complain. So it's just really, it's not that I don't have a heart to do it. It's just really, I need the divine strategies. I need God to orchestrate my time and help me prioritize and get all of these different things that, I'm, that I am doing done, getting, do, getting them done. Um... So anyway, you all look out because uh, I'm going to have, I didn't feature any new mugs for the last couple of days, but I should be featuring some new mugs next week. So I have tote bags I'm going to feature next week because next week starts um, next Friday is what they refer to as Black Friday and then Cyber Monday. Book them. <laughs> Allison, Hawaii 5 -0. Yeah, I remember that. I, it was like Dan Tanner or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But anyway, um, what was I going to say, family? Yeah, keep an eye out for my mugs, my tote bags. I'm going to be featuring them. Uh, what is it? Mugs, tote bags, notebooks, pens. Because I showed you guys this, right? This one doesn't have the scripture on it. But this is Beauty for Ashes. All of the new ones have the scripture on them all right but as i get more stuff in next week oh monday i gotta remember monday i'm gonna show you guys some new stuff all right so you all grace and peace have a wonderful weekend um it says it's 56 degrees here is very very sunny i just pray that today's feel good friday i pray that everyone feels good wait let's pray before we go it's 9 28 i have two minutes we need to pray for healing for everybody that needs a healing hope Dan, book them dano okay all right come on let me get my thoughts together i gotta pray for healing father god in the name of jesus lord we lift up everyone this morning who is in in need of a healing father i pray that you will bless them from the tops of their head to the soles of their feet lord everything that is out of divine order in their bodies could quickly bring it back into divine order father cause all of our functions blood systems, everything in our bodies, Father, cause it to operate according to your divine will, cause our bodies, our systems, our organs to function at 100% capacity, oh God. Father, for those who have suffered slips and falls, Father, I pray that you will just heal them and bless them immediately, oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will remove the pain. And God, I thank you that there has been no loss of life. I thank you for divinely orchestrating their steps, oh God, and we thank you for an immediate and a complete healing. We ask that you bless them once again, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning. Yes, two of my family members had slips and falls yesterday. So we continue to pray that God will keep us from all accidents, seen and unseen, all forms of hurt, harm and destruction. May we go throughout the course of this day untouched and unharmed in the name of Jesus. You all have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? All right. It's called Allison Vaughn. If you look over this shoulder at the end of this video, you will see my profile picture. I ask that you click or tap on that profile picture and that you subscribe to my channel. If you look um, or platform, if you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, I will attach Esther chapter seven and you can continue on with this cliffhanger. You will know exactly what happens at this banquet that they're about to have. All right. So this has been awesome. Once again, everybody, please do continue to go to my YouTube channel, visit it, watch the shorts, give them a thumbs up, leave some comments. Um, the algorithm is doing, I guess what it sometimes does, does not do. 
All right. So everybody, don't forget like, comment, share on whatever platform you were using. And thank you so much. You all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And we will be back on Monday. All right. Love you all. See you. Have a great weekend. Be safe, everybody. Blessings. Bye.